This video is for uh, Humphrey solenoid disassembly and maintenance for a shocker SFT or a nerve. Uh, this also applies to newer Indian Creek guns like Freestyle. Um, these are also used on uh, some intimidators. It's a CRCB solenoid, so if your solenoid says that, then you can use this video. First step for a shocker or nerve is to unplug the uh, eye ribbon. It simply comes out. Now you're going to have to use a 1 16th inch Allen wrench to unscrew these two spacer screws holding the solenoid to the body. Once the two come out, the solenoid will be loose from the body. It'll just slide right off. The manifold is located here, but you're not going to mess with that in this video, so I'm just going to set this nerve body aside. Now the two solenoid screws will still be in the solenoid, which you can just pull them out. Set them aside. Uh, the upper board on a Humphrey solenoid just slides off. Take that off, you'll be ready to go. Now the Humphrey solenoid has to be disassembled uh, a little bit more thoroughly than the Parker. Uh, you have to take everything apart, which includes the spool, the pilot, and the coil, which is the uh, magnet section. It doesn't matter which end you start with, so I'm just going to start with the coil by removing these two screws holding it on. The Phillips head screwdriver. Once the screws are loose, pull them away from the coil, and the coil will come off the pilot like that. It's stuck on by the sticker on the other side. So you can just take the sticker off, it doesn't matter. Now, the coil has this spring-loaded uh, core, that's what's called, a piece of steel stuck inside. You don't want to lose that. You might as well just stick inside the coil and set all that aside. Um, on the opposing pilot here, there's this, a large uh, O-ring gasket stuck to the side. You, of course, don't want to lose that. There's one screw holding the pilot to the spool. Use a screwdriver to remove that. Or loosen it. When the screw's loose, everything will come apart. Now on the other side, there's a very small little O-ring on the top. You have to keep that available. Don't lose that or else it'll leak. The uh, pilot, you're not going to do any maintenance of that, so you can just set that aside there. Take the spool and flip it around. You're going to remove the end cap. This is held on by two screws, just like the other side. Phillips head screwdriver to remove. And once the end cap is loose, it'll come right off. Drop the screw down. There's another very, very small o-ring located on the top of the end cap. You don't want to lose that, just like the pilot. Make sure you don't lose those. Now, the spool is now uh, basically exposed, but it's still stuck inside its housing by these uh, silver plates on the end. So you're going to have to remove those using your fingernails or a knife or anything you can. Uh, I just use my fingers for it. By just prying them off, they come right off. There's one o-ring located on the outside. But you can just set it down. Flip it around, do the other side. Set the other one down. Now the spool is located in the middle of this. It's still gonna, not going to come out. Uh, take one side and push as hard as you can. Eventually it will become free. You can pull from the other side, but you have to make sure you don't damage the o-rings. What I do is I take a small Allen wrench and very, very carefully push it out. It'll fall right out like that. It'll have one of these little discs around it. The other disc will be in the other side of the, of the housing. You can leave it in there. Now, there are uh, four O-rings located on the spool. Those are the ones you have to clean. So I'm just going to do that with a paper towel or a napkin, whatever I have. Make sure there's no dirt or debris on there. You can also take a Q-tip and run it through the inside of the spool housing, but you have to be sure not to leave any small hairs inside there. But once you're done with that, that's all there is to maintenance. You can reassemble it. Take some shocker grease, or Dow 33 or Sleek. And grease up the O-rings on the spool. There's four of them, as I said. Flip it around, do the last one. take the spool housing and insert the spool back inside so it fits. 
Remember, if you left the uh, disc inside this end, then flip it around, and this end has to have the disc. You can't double up the disc, put them on the same side. That won't work. But just guide everything into position and push it down together. I'll take these end cap plates and just snap those down into position. They'll hold themselves there. Take the other one, put it back on the other side, and just squeeze it like that and make sure everything's tight. The spool should move back and forth by a very, very small amount, maybe one or two millimeters, and that's normal. Now you're going to reassemble everything, which involves taking the end cap first, installing it onto the end with two screws. The end with three screws is for the pilot. We're going to do that later. So take the end cap, making sure the small o-ring is on there, push it into position. On the spool, there will be a small hole at the top. That hole faces the o-ring. So make sure they're aligned, not upside down, and then we'll be ready to go. Take the two screws, install them back into position, screw it down hand tight, and you'll be okay. Flip the spool around and you're going to reassemble the pilot now. Again, make sure it has the small o-ring located there and it's going to fit onto the spool so the small hole faces it. It's held on by just one screw, so drop that into position, tighten it down. Now take the coil with the core sticking out, spring loaded. Make sure that the o-ring is located there, it's larger. It fits around the whole inside portion of this. Take the two and just press fit them together like that. Take the two screws which hold on this, this metal uh, silver end cap piece. Put the screws into their holes in the back of the coil. Drop the screws down as far as they'll go. And tighten them down. Uh, the solenoid is now ready to go so you can take your upper board slide it back on. Take the two spacer screws, install them into their uh, grooves in the board. Take your shocker nerve body. Align the solenoid back onto the manifold. And tighten the screws back down into position. Only do this hand tight you don't want to over tighten the screws or else you strip the manifold and it'll leak. I have to replace it, so only hand tight. Once those are in place, you can uh, air up the gun by attaching a regulator and test it out, make sure there's no leaks. Disassemble it again if necessary. And after that, you're done.